Coach, there's so many to choose from, but um, what are your favorite moments during your time at Florida State? I mean, there's just so many. I know it's going to be hard to narrow down, but you know, just it, when it comes to your mind, your favorite moment at Florida State, just what pops up? I would have to say the favorite moment was the night we were in Omaha and was early in the ball game and it was between innings. I looked up in the stands and there was about 24,000 there, old Rosenblatt. And I could see parents smiling, happy, just loving every minute of it. And I said to myself, golly, wouldn't I love just to be a parent for a small period and enjoy watching my son play baseball. I haven't been able to do that because I don't coach that way. He's a player for Florida State. He is not going to be treated as my son. He is, he better do the job or he's going to sit. Then I got to thinking, what's wrong with, what's wrong with one moment today that I just be a daddy? So about 20 minutes later, Mike's in the on deck circle and I said, Dad Gummit, I'm going to do it. Minkavich was on first. Mike comes to the plate, and we were in the first base dugout. Minkavich is looking for a sign. There's one out, and I didn't even look at him. I just looked in the stands and looked out into the left field area where the big scoreboard was and the beach balls out there being hit. And Mike got in the batter's box, glanced over for a sign, and I just kind of did that like what am I gonna do was well, it's one out we're not gonna do anything left-handed hitter I don't want to hit and run we're not gonna bunt let's play I just gonna be a daddy for a little bit first pitch was a ball Doug looked over and I just kind of nodded and next pitch Mike singled up the middle Doug goes to third looks at meet at first base and points at him and I'm first and third now I ain't no daddy no more it's time to <laughs> score that run <laughs> I'll, that's one of my favorite moments what I mean <clears throat> what do, win one win 1000 which like games in particular stand out which milestone games do you kind of remember I mean you got the sign over there with Thousand. Yeah, Chip put that over there, and had he not put it there, I wouldn't know where it is. But it, and I'm glad he did because that was a, that was a special night because we were at 9.99, and the players were really wanting this to happen, and Miami's coming to town, and Miami I know was not going to be the team. We knew it's, the rivalry is bad enough as it is, so to speak, or I should say good enough as it is. And they swept us. So we're playing Tuesday night against a very good Jacksonville team who's pitching a guy who pitched in the big leagues. We go first and third, eighth inning, two outs. And I did something I've never done. In practice, sometimes, we you know, to speed things up, you don't go through signs and all of that. You just go. <laughs> what you're telling the guy at first, take off. So I got a guy at third, and Baker's coaching third, and I looked at I looked at Baker, and I looked at the guy at first, and I went, because we had not gotten a sniff off of this guy. We gambled. Sure enough, the winning run scored. Next inning, we went, we got them three up, three down, game over. But we won the game on that unusual play, and it just happened to be the thousandth. 
I remember you saying a while ago, was the first one, was that against Miami? Yep. Yep. I can tell you anything you want to know about the first game I ever coached. Because it was also the weekend of the miracle on ice. So it's very easy for me to to go through that one. But the, the funniest thing, I guess, was we threw a ball away in the ninth inning to lose game two. The first game I ever coached at Florida State, I coached third base because I had coached third base for five years prior to that. And I coached third base for the first five years that I was a head coach. But that particular night, the first year I ever coached as a head coach, I'm coaching third base. We did not get a man to third base. We got beat 10 to nothing. And I am sitting there after the game thinking, is this what I signed up for? This is not really what I thought it would be. I didn't have a chance to make a mistake. We were dominating. <laughs> Pitcher was named Neil Heaton, pitched in the big leagues for a number of years. So the next day we get beat on a throwing error. We, we had, oh, that one hurt. That one killed me. Nothing throw to first base. A nothing throw to first base. And we threw it away and got beat. So we go to Sunday. We're down eight to two. We're in the fifth. And I said, we're in trouble. I'm going to get some guys in the ball game. So I took some guys out all of a sudden. Mike Yastrzemski singles up the middle and it goes from eight to two to eight to four. I said, okay, we, got, we don't score. We get into the eighth inning. Couple of runners on base, base hit up the middle, eight to five. And I went, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you dumb idiot. You got a chance to win and you've got substitutes in the game except for Yastrzemski and he's got nothing of a chance to hit in the ninth. Well, we get one more run, it's eight to six. We go into the ninth. They go get Neil Heaton to pitch the ninth the guy that shut us out on Friday night, they bring him back. That's how this series <laughs> is. And I'm going, well, I figured he'd do that. Skip Berkman was the assistant coach. My assistant coach was Jim Morris. So we're playing Miami. We're down two, bottom of the ninth. Hit by pitch. Puts runners on first and second, and the score is eight to six. Mike Yastrzemski hitting from the right side against Neil Heaton. Puts one up in that wind that always blows out to left over the scoreboard. We win the ball game nine to eight. That was the first win that we had as, as a head coach. Do you still love it as much now as you did then? Probably more. <laughs> the rivalry has grown. Uh, going to Miami is not any fun. The, 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 the fans are, are very, very tough, and they don't. They, they just don't understand that we're, we're working with young men and trying to to teach them the the best way to go through life and you have an adult up there uh, bringing things up that happened years and years ago and it's just not an environment that that anybody enjoys you go to other schools in the ACC and it's not like that the the, the competition is great the fans are rowdy for their team, 
but they're not as as mean as the Miami fans are. You mentioned Meat and the memory with him of, of being a dad there in Omaha. Did you ever imagine you would get to coach alongside him for so long? I mean, what has that meant to you just to get all those moments as well? No, I, I really didn't. I, I never encouraged him to get into coaching. Uh, when he got out of pro ball, he came back and he was basically just looking for something to bide his time while he looked around the area to see what he wanted to do. And we had what back then what they call unpaid assistance, restricted earnings it was changed to later, but restricted earnings is back then was pretty restricted too. <laughs> but anyway, the more I, I listened to him talk to guys, the more I realized how much he had to offer this program. And one thing led to another and he was starting to get interest from other schools. And I told him, I said, you know, you, you do what you feel you need to do, but I really, I really need you. And it's totally up to you. And he kicked it around a couple of times and said, I'll just, I'll just stay here. Back then, he had, he just bought a house and decided to stay here. I have to admit, I did not think it would last this long. I'm glad it has. He's he, Mike Bell, Clyde Keller, very, very, very important part of our program. Coach, I know you've you know you've been around the Florida State program for so long. I know you've received a ton of offers. How close did you come to taking that Georgia offer in the early two thousand? <laughs> I'll tell you how close I was. Had I gone up there, I know I would have taken it. I didn't go because I said I don't want to leave this place. This is home. This is my university. I love Florida State. I don't want to go anywhere else. I know that they would have almost doubled my salary. That wasn't going to be the reason that I was going to leave. And I thank God that I stayed. We have a a great situation here at Florida State with our from and it starts at the top with President Thrasher to Stan Wilcox and outstanding staff that he's assembled. This is a great place, Tallahassee, to live, Florida State to work. The people are just true, good, solid people. Never in all my years have I been at Florida State where I've seen so much camaraderie and all of the coaches pulling for each other. Some back in the old days, heck, I didn't even know half of them. <laughs> but now it's totally different. And that's a credit to the Florida State administration. With, um, you know, with you staying, obviously the baseball program benefited, but so has the city of Tallahassee. You and your wife give a lot of money to programs around the city. Just what made you want to do that and be just a huge pillar of the community? Well, I try to get through this without getting emotional, but uh, we, we have a deep affection for children. My wife is, uh, she's, she's so special. My oldest daughter, lost a little girl years ago. And that, of course, just just crushed us as a family. A uh, few months later, a Seminole was conceived, and now we have a
guess we need to pick that up. <laughs> anyway, when Haley was lost, it just, it broke our hearts. And we said, if we ever have a chance, we want to do something at TMH because those people were so nice. They just caring. They made us feel the best we could possibly feel when we went through this. And so when there was a chance for a playroom, I give all the credit to Carol. She took it upon herself to do what needed to be done. And the Mike Martin Playroom is one of the biggest honors that that I have because those those children, you go up there, and I had a guy come up to me the other day after a speaking engagement and say he was up there and his grandson was up there playing in that playroom. And Carol goes up there, makes sure all the toys are still in place. She needs to get any more books. And that that's special to me. Tallahassee is a special place. It's the spot that you want to live and raise a family. Um, I mean, I guess just, you mentioned being just a father, just just a grandfather. Whenever this comes to an end, how much are you looking forward to getting to have that time and getting to be around so much in that, not that you aren't now, but? My two grandsons are uh, different. Let's just put it this way. One's a right-hander, one's a left-hander. So <laughs> the lefty plays golf right-handed. The righty hits baseballs left-handed. The righty is a shortstop for North Florida Christian, second base shortstop. And it's a pretty good player. He's got a long way to go. He needs to get bigger and stronger. But So we all did when we were that age. The 14-year-old is a golfer. And he is, uh, he's pretty darn good. Uh, I used to give him a stroke, a hole. Then I reduced it to strokes on the four and five pars, but not on the three pars because I was getting killed every time we played. And now, he doesn't give me strokes, but he should. <laughs> he's your golfing partner every time you go? When we go play, uh, we play even and up to this point, he is three up. He's beaten me the last three times we've played. And he wants to play college golf, and he knows that there's a long way to go to, to get to that level. Just, you know, you, you talked about having the daddy moment. Um, when you do, you know, step away, how excited are you to go and just be a daddy and watch your son be coach? at the college level, just, you know, as, as a father rather than as his boss? Well, of course, we don't know when I retire who's going to be the next coach. Uh, I think anybody that knows me knows who I hope the next coach is. When I retire, whenever that is, I will certainly be there, whoever the coach is. This is a program that I have so much respect for, and it goes back to when I first came to Florida State with my bride. Many people don't know, Carol and I got married in 53 years ago and came down here on our honeymoon and basically haven't left. This is, this is a place that we wanna be in uh, the majority of our time for the rest of our life. Uh, wouldn't mind going to the mountains some in the summer, let's get that clear. A little cooler up there. But I'm just saying that I'm going to be there, good Lord willing, and watch my grandson play. And I'm going to be there and watch my grandson putt. So I'm going to be at both places as often as I can to watch them. And I know that Carol will be there with me. Um, ironically, I haven't mentioned the fact that our firstborn granddaughter is a junior here at Florida State. 